Hello. Good morning. Nice to see you here. Today, it's Thursday, April the 29th, and today we're going to be talking all about feelings and emotions. And we've got some nice groovy music this time. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk all about different idioms, language, we've got listening practice, we've got Stan the Man coming to visit us, lots of exciting stuff. Great. Let me turn down the music. <clears throat> Let me wish you all um, a very, very happy Thursday. I hope you're doing well. Despite the tribals and tribulations, <clears throat> the trials and tribulations of COVID, I know it's hitting a lot of countries very hard at the moment. I hope you're all staying safe <clears throat> and keep on studying with me. Let's begin with <clears throat> a little bit of this. Hello, nice to see you. I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. <laughs> a frog is like ribbit, ribbit, ribbit in my throat here, right? When you've got something like <clears throat> and you can't clear your throat, I've got a frog in my throat. So I'm going to keep on drinking my tea. I've got some nice um, breakfast tea. And say hello, who's in the house? Steve. Steve Roger, nice to see you. Irene, nice to see you as well. Gyun Tu Tui, I always mispronounce your name, but nice to see you. Sajad is here. Kate, hello, good morning. Um, Shirag is here. Artyom from Armenia, nice to see you. Patricia, nice to see you as well. Tanja from Germany as well. Um, we've got Elizabeth from Nigeria. <clears throat> Great. Um, who else have we got? From Iran, BL Creation. That can't be your name. Hello, Mr. BL Creation. No, it's obviously a nice handle you've got. But listen, guys, nice to see you all coming into the, the room today. Um, as I mentioned today, right, we're doing what are we doing today? We're doing this interesting topic of well, this one, right? Emotions and feelings. Um, let me show you exactly what we're going to do today. <clears throat> OK, come over here. Right. Um, so we've got emotions and feelings. All sort. I mean, look at these guys. All sorts of expressions and feelings we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at vocabulary. For example, <clears throat> did you know that to say happy, <clears throat> we can say content, pleased, ecstatic, actually lots of other words as well. In addition to vocabulary, we're going to do some practice where you're going to be practicing with me. Great. Um, we're going to look at some topical issues. I think today we'll look a little bit at mental health, which is very topical, especially given the, you know, the situation we're in. <clears throat> well, with COVID, people losing family, people losing their jobs, a lot of pressure. So we're going to touch on this topic. Um, we're going to look at a listening task. As I mentioned, Stan the Man is coming in. We've got a short video with Stan who will be talking about how men and women express their feelings in different ways. Oh dear, could be quite controversial, a bit stereotypical, but let's find out what he's got to say. Um, and then we'll be looking at one or two idioms. I wonder if you know this idiom. To feel down in the dumps. You can probably guess, right? Down is not feeling up, feeling bad, feeling sad in the dumps. The dumps is like the rubbish where you put all the rubbish. So if you're in the rubbish bin, obviously you don't feel very well. So feel down in the dumps is not feeling well, feeling feeling bad, feeling sad and depressed, right? Not, not sick, but just depressed, not feeling well. Idioms. And of course, we'll finish up as we always do with a bit of review and a fun game to finish. So that is my plan for today. That's what oof, 
that's what we're going to do. Let's um, come back in and do what? I'm going to start off with just sharing with you. This is a note. I do like to share notes and emails that people share with me. Um, a, because I think they're very, very motivating for me to know that I'm helping people. But um, I hope also they can motivate other people to think, ah, me too. I can also achieve my goals in English learning and IELTS. And I would like to focus very much not just on IELTS, but, you know, the key to success in IELTS is to elevate, right, take up, take up your overall English skills, not just exam technique, but all of your English skills, right? For me, it's the difference between between being a, a struggling IELTS student, right, and being an IELTS speaker, right, a confident English speaker. That's really where I want to take you. If you want to come with me, please do. So listen, back to that note, Ali said to me, Hi, Keith, I would like to thank you for such great courses, the courses that I offer. He said, both courses helped me not only to improve my speaking, but also other sections as well. It's so true, right? The courses help speaking, but I think they also help listening, um, a bit of reading and writing, Possibly not much writing, but definitely listening. I got my IELTS results recently and my band scores were speaking 7.5, overall 8. I'm pretty sure that anyone who takes your courses will definitely see its positive improvements in a very short period of time. Thank you, Ali. Ali, yeah. Ali thank you so much for that note. That's really, 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 really nice. Um, the courses that he's talking about, if you don't know, are the Fluency for IELTS Speaking and the uh, IELTS Speaking Success course. They both at the moment on, on Udemy. Um, the links are on my website and I can share those with you. The Fluency course um, is, as I mentioned, elevating your overall level of English, right? Focus on building fluency phrasing, chunks, intonation. The IELTS speaking success is much more focused on the exam. Exam technique, exam practice, tips and strategies. Um, it's a complete preparation course. But those are there. So you can um, go and check them out. You can find out more on my website. Um, it's the Keith Speaking Academy. And on that website, you can get all the information about these courses there. Right. Excellent. Let me take those off and let me take this off. By the way, if you are on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, do subscribe, turn on notifications to find out about my upcoming videos. But today we're talking about feelings, right? Um, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to feelings and then I've got a question for you, right? So first of all, quick introduction. Oh, hello. <coughs> behind the scenes, <laughs> unintended. So feelings and emotions, there are two main types of feelings or emotions, right? I have discovered in my research, primary and secondary, right? Primary emotions are, as it says, the main emotions, love, happiness, surprise, anger, sadness. It's the, the emotion or the feeling you have about something. But this is interesting. Each of these can lead to secondary emotions, which is a reaction to the first emotion. So what I mean, for example, if you feel love, right, that could also lead to feelings of excitement. And the excitement is your reaction to love. That's your secondary emotion. You might be confused. Ooh, why am I in love? Why have I lost my appetite? Why can't I sleep at night? Maybe because you've got the love and you feel confusion. You may feel embarrassment. And all of these are secondary emotions. I didn't know that, but now I do. <laughs> and now you do. And of course, right, you've got positive and negative ones. We can talk about positive feelings, maybe love and happiness, negative ones, anger, sadness and so forth, right? So in this lesson today, we're going to be looking at the vocabulary you need to describe a range of feelings, as well as talking about, we'll talk about the main topical issue today, mental health. 
Um, if time, if time permits, we might look at emotional intelligence, which is interesting as well, right? Okay, so um, I've got a quick question for you guys. <laughs> how are you feeling? Or in English, we often say, how are you doing? How are you doing? And the are you becomes a you. How are you? How are you? How are you feeling? Right? When you ask people, you don't say, how are you? No. How are you? How are you? How are you feeling? How are you doing? So there's my question. Tell me, how are you doing <laughs> today? <laughs> Let's see. Lots of people in the house. It's a bit busy. Let's see. Somebody on Facebook says, I'm feeling elated. Mostafa is fine. Oh, Dennis, I feel down in the dumps. I'm so sorry to hear that, Dennis. Shika is excited. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Claudia says, absolutely excited and glad to attend a live lesson for the first time. Claudia, welcome. Nice to see you here. Shivam is feeling good. Great. Ayan, great as well. This is nice. Azima, I'm doing great. That's nice. It's a nice collocation. I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. I'm going to actually copy that because I like that very, very much. It's very nice. I'm, whoops, I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. <laughs> or maybe I'm doing terrible. Who knows? But that's a lovely collocation. like it. Feeling low, right. Not so well, says Oybek. Oh, dear. And Minakshi as well. I'm feeling under the weather. Right. This is nice. My mental health is very good. Very nice. I'm not surprised with your um, philosophy and your avatar. You look very uh, connected with the universe. Good. <laughs> um, Alicia, how do you feel? I mean, great. This is your first class. I wonder how you feel. <laughs> Another one under the weather. Right. I'm not surprised, actually, because um, when I went on the, the Facebook page, or, well, the Facebook group, if you don't know, I have a Facebook group. Um, I actually, sorry, guys, let me just bring you over here. <clears throat> I actually have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. The Facebook group, the Facebook page, the Facebook group is a, is a community where we're all studying together and sharing experiences and language and questions um, or language. And the and the what, what was my point, is that I asked yesterday how people were feeling. And interesting, a lot of people said, yeah, I feel down in the dumps. I feel under the weather. I feel stressed, depressed. And a lot of it was to do with COVID. A lot of you I know are also, a lot of students in India are f feeling the squeeze of COVID at the moment. It's very, very difficult. People were stressed and confused, especially those preparing for the IELTS exam as well. So I'm not surprised. It was interesting, a, a lot of the different answers that we, we got there. But quite a lot of people were also happy, elated, feeling good, um, doing great, right? All different ways. So a myriad of feelings around the world. I'm going to share some vocabulary of some of the main feelings, right? For example, happy. Let me take this one up here, right? I feel happy today. <clears throat> we can say, as well as happy, we can say content. Now, listen careful. <laughs> listen careful. Listen carefully. <laughs> it's not content because content is the stuff inside a book or a film. It's content, right? Content, content. The stress is on the tent, <clears throat> content. If you're content, then you're happy. Stress on the tent. Pleased is happy. Ecstatic is very happy. Let me just add that, right? How do you feel? Ecstatic, very happy. Similar to elated, you may also know. Elated. It doesn't mean you're late. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm late. 
No, I'm elated. A nice stress on the elate, elated. Elated. I'm elated. Also means that you're happy, right? Now, other words. So you can say, I feel content. I feel ecstatic. But if you want to say, I'm happy about something, I'm happy about my exam result, or I'm happy that I passed the exam, or I'm happy about the fact that I passed the exam, you can say, I'm glad. I'm glad that you are here. I'm delighted you are watching me today. I'm thrilled so many people are on the call. I'm pleased that you are here with me today, learning together. So all of these words we can say, I'm glad about, or I'm delighted about. Delighted, again, stress on the I, delighted. Say that with me, delighted. Yeah. I know in a lot of languages it's dum, 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 dum. I am delighted. Mm. But in English, you've got this ding, 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 right? I'm delighted about. I'm delighted that I'm here. Lovely. Good. I'm thrilled, right? Thrilled to bits is a nice uh, <coughs> idiomatic expression. I'm thrilled to bits. I'm thrilled to bits, which is obviously very happy, right? So delighted and thrilled both mean very happy. So I'm just going to take this bum, bum, and put it here, and put it here. But we don't need elated again, <laughs> I don't think. Right. In fact, we don't even need the brackets. Why do I put brackets? Great. So that's happiness. But of course, you may have a different feeling. You may feel angry. And if you feel angry, you could say, I am cross, cross, right? Why do we say cross? I don't know, but it's like the cross. Um, I'm cross, I'm irate, irate, irate. The stress on the rate, irate. It's like almost you don't know what to say. I am um, irate. <laughs> I'm, he's irate. I was irate about the exam result. I was cross about the government uh, doing something that they usually do. Vexed is a nice word. Vexed. It's a vexed. It's a k -s k vex -s vexed. Not easy, I know, but try again. Vexed. Vexed. I was vexed about the problem. Okay, great. Angry. Sad. As we mentioned earlier, a few of you said down, low, blue, like the music. Why is the music, the blues, called the blues? Because it reflects the, the, the oppression, the struggle, the, the sadness that is there that people have felt. And through that music, right? So I feel blue or despondent. I feel despondent is an interesting word. Um, stress on the spon, spon, despondent, spon. Great. And of course, as somebody said, you've got that idiomatic expression down in the dumps. Brilliant down in the dumps. Stop writing brackets, Keith. Why do you keep writing brackets? I don't know. <laughs> habit. Change your habits. Go and read James Clear. If you want to change your habits, go and read James Clear. It's really interesting. Um, anyway, sad. Let's move on. We've got happy, angry, sad. Anything else? No, not at the moment. So um, let me just Check in with you guys. I'm sure you've given me lots more things we can say as well. <laughs> yes, Farjana says, I'm feeling fantastic. Great. Pandya, first day at your live session. I'm doing great. Lovely. Great student, Pandya. Well done. Tao says, I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. Yeah, Sitarsa says, I'm doing well. 
Um, anything else? Superb, says Antonio. I'm feeling superb. <laughs> Mustafa, this is interesting. But can I share? Because I think it's not quite right. But share for everybody. Over the sky. Now, the sky is huge. I think it's very difficult to be over the sky. I think you mean over the moon, right? I think. If you mean very happy, it's over the moon. Thank you, Mustafa, for sharing that. That's great. Can help everybody. And Saba as well. Let me share with this because this is interesting, right? Shaba says, I'm at cloud nine to see the live session, right? Now, for some reason, we don't say at cloud nine. We say on cloud nine, a bit like the monkey king who used to fly on top of the cloud. He's on the cloud, right? On cloud nine. Saba, brilliant. Very, very good. Thank you. We've got Raul who says, I'm feeling, again, top of the world. You must be on. I, I love teaching in my daughter's room because she has all these props. Here's the world, right? Um, and here's... Oh, where have we got? <laughs> here's Rahul. Rahul is on. <laughs> on. Not next to, but on top of the world. Rahul, you are on top of the world. Well done. Thank you so much for sharing. It's beautiful. And it helps everybody. It really does. Even if people make small mistakes, it helps everybody else in the group. So keep sharing your ideas. It's really good. Thank you. I'm I'm on feeling. No, come on, Keith. Come on. Get serious. <laughs> I'm feeling on top of the world. Brilliant. You see, even I make mistakes. <laughs> Brilliant. Anything else that's interesting? Feeling very glad. Brilliant. Good. Meenakshi says, I, I, I thrilled that you read my comment first time. And now it's the second time. Yes. But this time, Meenakshi, <laughs> I'm going to make a small correction because it's to be thrilled, right? I am thrilled or I feel thrilled. Yeah, great. Good. Uh, why slides? I'm thrilled to bits. Lovely. Thrilled to bits. Right. Oh, Down Young has just done the test two hours ago and you're here after the test. That is so impressive. I hope it went well for you. Great. OK, anything else? Oh, black gold. I'm bitter. Interesting because bitter is a taste, but it's also a feeling, right? I'm bitter. You may be bitter or angry with somebody. Yeah. OK, very, very, very nice. Thank you for sharing. Lovely. Um, quick question. Not a question. I'd like you to finish the phrase. Right. Choose any of these and just give me a short phrase. You can say I feel vexed. Vexed is <laughs> angry. Thrilled is yay. Happy. Down in the dumps. Is sad and excited is excited. Take a moment, choose one, just one, and finish the phrase that is true for you. And this is really important because when you take the, the dry words and you internalize them, you make them alive for you, that's when the learning happens. So give me a phrase, it's also quite interesting. <laughs> Give me a phrase. <laughs> oh, wow, you guys are quick. I mean, really quick. <laughs> Nino, I feel vexed when I got my electric big I felt, oh, I felt, I felt, I felt, I felt. I see what you're saying. I felt, feel, felt, right? Because I think that's going to be a common mistake, right? It's one people often confuse. Fall, fell, feel, felt. I felt vexed when I got my bills. I know what you mean. I do, yes. Um, another one here from Singh. Um, I, oh, hang on a minute. I got thrilled. 
I can't read because my screen thing is covered. I feel thrilled whenever there is a party at my home. There we go. Thank you. Nice. Very good. And what I like, what you've done there, is you put whenever. And that is great because it's not just when. Whenever emphasises every time, right? Maybe not just once, but every time. So I feel vexed, you know, whenever I there is a party or I feel thrilled when there's a party, then it's every time. That's nice. Great. Zara, I felt thrilled when I got my driving license. I can understand that. That's great. Chari, maybe one day we can meet. <laughs> Rupinder, I feel thrilled when I saw you are live, right? Yes, now that's okay. I wonder though, because you say feel is now or all the time. I wonder if you mean when I see you are live, like every time. If it's every time, then it's I feel when I see. If it's just once in the past or today, I felt when I saw. So just be careful with your tenses, everybody. Great. Hat is, I feel vexed when I find my car in the pool, when I found. Yeah, again, if it's just one time in the past, I'm going to change this one for you because I think you need the past felt. Most commonly, you'd have the past and the past or the present and the present. I felt vexed when I found my car in the pool. <laughs> what do you mean your car was in the pool? You mean the swimming pool? Seriously? Oh, that's great. <laughs> or maybe it's a different pool. Is it the pool where the government has taken your car away and they have it in the carpool? Maybe that's what you mean. <laughs> Osman, I feel vexed when I lose the internet connection. Great, feel, lose. Present, present. Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, Ulvier says, I feel vexed when my work doesn't go well. Very nice. Great. Why is everyone vexed? Let's get some others excited. Sing, sing. I feel excited when I get a new phone. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Joanna, I feel thrilled when I am. Wow. Now, at first, Joanna, I thought you forgot to finish the sentence. But then I thought maybe Joanna is being spiritual and philosophical. I feel thrilled when I am, when I am me, I am myself, just when I am present in the now. Maybe you're being spiritual. Joanna, nice. Thank you for sharing. Love it. <laughs> OK, so interesting. Let me switch over. And let me, let me have a drink. Badab she be do be do be do be bum bum bum. Okay. Great. Um. So moving on now. I um, on Tuesday I think it was on Tuesday, I put a notice on YouTube, Facebook page, Facebook group, to say what the topic is today, right? Feelings and emotions. And for those of you who are just joining, by the way, um, can I show you? Yes. Today we're talking about emotions and feelings. And on Tuesday, I also opened up a web page on my website and gave you a link so you could go there and do a task because I want to get you engaged before the lesson. So you're already thinking about the language that you need for this lesson. So I asked you to do a task and don't worry if you didn't see it because I'm going to show it to you now. And it's all about word families. Now, what are word families? Do you mean brother and sister? No, no. I mean noun, verb, adjective, adverb, others that may be. Those are the main ones, right? So when we talk about the economy as a noun, um, economical as the adjective, economist is the person, economically is the adverb, right? 
these are the word families and it's always good as you're growing your language and growing your vocabulary to also grow the word families because it just it's a quick win right for one word you can get four different words let me show you what i mean right and show you the activity so we're talking about nouns adjectives verbs adverbs others when we learn vocabulary it's a good idea to be aware of word families so i mean the noun adjective verb adverb etc of a word we're going to look at the table below and i want you to try and fill in the missing words you can leave a comment um, and i also asked you to create a sentence but for today you can just fill in the missing words okay um so here is the activity i hope you can see that it might be a little bit small let me just make it slightly bigger it's magic isn't it look at that okay so i've given you the verb to loathe meaning to hate to adore meaning to love to irritate, meaning to make somebody annoyed or angry. To confuse, meaning to make somebody <laughs> confused. Whoops. Giving you the answers. So can you tell me what are the missing words? Four missing words. Have a look and see if you can put them in the notes. In the notes? In the comments. <laughs> Uh, oh, interesting, interesting. I'll just give you a second. That way I can have a sip. It's nice to drink the tea when it's hot. <clears throat> and it's still hot. It was scorching when I got it. I was a bit rushed today. I was rushed getting everything set up and my wife was so kind that she poured the tea, prepared the tea and even brought it to my seat. And it was scorching hot when I arrived, when I started. So I couldn't drink it, but now it's perfect. Okay, so let's see. Um, Lo, the adjective. Oh, everybody's finding this one difficult. Has anybody got the right one? Ah, yes, here we go. This one's tough, right? But May has it right. It's loathsome, right? Loathsome is the adjective. Um, I'm going to write it in in a moment. Adore. Has anybody got it? Hey, yes. Now, I can't pronounce this because I don't know Arabic. I'm assuming it's Arabic. Um, adoration. Yes. The noun is the adoration. Excellent, thank you. What about irritate? The noun is, 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 is. Anybody? Irritate, anybody got irritate? Danielle has it. Irritation. Irritation is the noun, excellent. And then, for the last one, for confusion, and the adjective is... Dun, dun, dun. Well, has anybody got it? We've got quite a few loathsomes. Well done, Femilet. Quite a lot of irritations. Any others? Confuse, confuse, confuse. Well, I'm going to share this one with you. Raven Blitz says loathsome. Yes. Adornment. No. Confusing. Yes. It was confusing. Or, right, there are two possibilities. Has anybody got the other one? The clue is in the, what, the word above. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Confused, right? It can be confused or confusing. Exactly. Let me just put these up then, the, the answers. And again, make them slightly, slightly bigger. Dun, 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 dun. 
Okay, so to loathe is to hate, right? So if something that you hate is loathsome, right? Um, let's imagine, unfortunately, there's a person you hate, right? Let's imagine, I don't know, a neighbour. You say, that neighbour is loathsome right? He's always shouting and playing his music so loud and he's really grumpy and, you know, not very nice. He's a loathsome person. It's a tricky word, but fun because it's got the th and the s. Loathsome. Some. Some. Loathsome. Loathsome. Um, a loathsome person which means to hate, right? To adore is to love and adoration is the noun, right? Um, you know, the, the the adoration that the fans have for Justin Bieber is incredible, for example. Irritation as well. The irritation is the annoyance or the annoyed feeling. The irritation I have when my computer doesn't work or... It's off the limits, right? There's just too much irritation when my computer doesn't work. And of course, you can have irritated or irritating. Um, irritated is a feeling you have because of that. Irritating describes the thing that makes you irritated. So the computer is the thing, right, that makes me irritated. I feel irritated and my computer is irritating, right? Irritated is my feeling. Irritating is what makes the thing that makes me feel that. Confused and confusing is the same, right? I'm confused. So many students are confused with IELTS, right? Because IELTS is the confusing thing. Not true. Well, it is true, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> that's why I'm here to um, to make you clear and give you some clarity clear clarity adjective noun can you see word families so useful to show off your language in the test okay very very nice great thank you for all of those um, I'm going to switch just for a moment to kind of catch up and show you this so listen we're feeling we've been talking about feelings and just to make it clear so that I know where I am, we've talked about different vocabulary like content, pleased, ecstatic, right? How you feel. Let's move on and do a bit of practice. We've done a little bit of practice, right? About I feel vexed because my car was in the pool. Love it. Um, but let's do some more practice. And I'm going to show you a couple of photos. And we're going to talk about the photos, right? Okay, so let me find those photos. Where are they, Keith? I think the photos are here. I want you, give me a moment, to tell me, look at the photo and tell me how this person is feeling and why. So you have to guess, right? Look at the photo and tell me how the person is feeling and why. So maybe you say they're feeling uh, cross because they their car was stolen, right? Maybe. So look at the photo and guess how are they feeling and why. Here's number one. Right? Get your uh, creative juices flowing and let's see what you come up with. <laughs> Air Angel, love it. Very funny. <laughs> uh, I'm cross because there are a lot of ads in YouTube. It's true, yes. But, you know, that's how it works. <laughs> the feeling is mutual. OK, let's have a look. We've got... Um, try and give me a, a, a sentence, if you can. I've just got single words. A sentence is better. Something like this. He feel... He feels surprised. Boom it. 
thank you so much because this is a great learning opportunity for everybody. You've probably realized that what you need, right, is that S. He feels surprised, right? He feels surprised. Okay, Vivek, love it. He's shocked to see the boss in Superman's dress. Nice, great. Thank you. Rula says, confused. Okay, he is confused by her answer, right? Patricia, he's worried for something. Um, okay, you can say, I'm worried for somebody. I'm worried for you. But you can't say, I'm worried for something, right? You have to say, I'm worried about something. He's worried about something. Yeah, I'm worried for you. Yes, but I'm worried about something. OK, anything else? He feels confused because he was fired. Ah, nice, Osman. Very nice. Great. Oh, this is light. nice. He's feeling baffled. Yeah, excellent. Let me just make a note of that because baffled is the same as confused, but it's a lovely word. Thank you for that, Minhas. Great. Black gold, he felt disturbed because his wife left him. Oh dear. Maybe, maybe. Yep. Fermi led, he was confused by what his boss said. Yeah, let me just change that for you. To be confused by something, irritated by what his boss is saying. Lovely, good. Uh, Sim Ranjit says that he is feeling confused to see her reaction. Yes. Yep, good. <laughs> okay, he's confused, surprised. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. Faryad, this is good. The man is perplexed, right? Perplexed, that's another word which is confused. That's a great word. I'll come back and review these with you. Perplexed. Excellent. Anything else? Shocked and amazed. This person is disappointed because, because of someone's answer ah right like he's in the uh he's in the meeting yes and he's disappointed because of someone's answer because of right great julia thank you great okay some interesting ideas okay nice like it i'm going to show you a different picture right um now if you can just make your comment a bit longer why is no <laughs> how is she feeling she how is she feeling and why OK, here's number two. And uh, as you're just feeling about that feeling, thinking, let's put a bit of music on. Great, nice bit of music. Okay, Ina says she's puzzled about the information. Puzzled is another great word. Puzzled about the information given to her on the phone. Lovely, given to her in the passive. Great control, Ina. Really good control of English. Like it. Simran, she's thinking about her new dress. Yes. <laughs> she caught herself gossiping about his future husband. About her future husband, I think, right? 
Yeah, she caught herself. That's nice. She caught herself. She stopped herself gossiping about her future husband. Maybe. Who knows? Um, here's an interesting one. She's worried because her mother-in-law is coming. Daughters and mother-in-laws. Yeah, tell me about it. Great. She's confused. Listening to someone on the phone. Oh, this is great, Wajahad. Great. She's feeling vexed. Great. Because of an irritating customer she has on a call. Whoa. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning language, Wajahat. Very nice. Love it. Lubna, she's carefully listening to her friend. Very nice. But how is she feeling? Hmm. Jivina, Jivina says she feels it as a boring conversation. Yeah, I think that's a typo. I think not as, but she feels it is a boring conversation. Yes. <laughs> Sedant. She's bewildered. That's another great word. Wow, you guys, are you swallowing dictionaries? But really good. I'm going to make a note of these because we'll come back to them. She's bewildered, but why? I like this one from Sidant, actually. She's feeling vexed to hear her mother scolding her. Right, telling her off. Yeah, probably her mother is saying, get off the phone. You've been on the phone for two hours already. Look at the bill. I have to pay. <laughs> scolding mothers. Great. Um... All right. Maybe this one from Rashmi. She's feeling irritated to hear what her friend is saying to her on the phone. Yeah, nice. Very, very nice. We'll just add there on the phone. We put on the phone. OK, Mitra says she's feeling cross. Many, many possibilities, right? But brilliant. Some really nice, interesting answers. Let me bring you back. Um to the the feeling thing let me just bring it up here can you see here we go how are they feeling and why there were lots of fantastic words here um related to confused so all of these mean confused say with me baffled she was baffled she was baffled by her friend. No, she was baffled by the call. Perplexed. She was perplexed. She was perplexed about the exam. Flabbergasted. 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 The flap is the, is the stress, right? She was flabbergasted. She was flabbergasted by the news. Listen. Can you hear that? Again. She was flabbergasted by the news. Yeah, get that phrasing nice. She was flabbergasted ba, 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 by the news. Two phrases. She was flabbergasted by the news. Great. Puzzled. She was puzzled by her mother. Puzzled by her mother-in-law, probably. Or bewildered. Bewildered. Yeah. Brilliant. Nice. Great. So listen, very, very good. Nice words. Great. All to do with confused. Excellent. Let us switch for a moment and come back. We've done quite a bit of practice there, which is great. Um, let's move on. Ah, Let's have a look at mental health. This is a really interesting topic, right? All about emotions and mental health. Um, I'm going to share with you a website, actually, and it's a website by the NHS in the UK 
the National Health Service is the government run service to promote health in the UK. Um, and the, on their website, I found an interesting uh, page about mental health and how to tackle mental health. I think especially nowadays, it's a very interesting topic. Interesting, we say to tackle mental health. So to tackle is to, to handle or to cope with, right? Let me just share a couple of these words because I think they're very uh, they? <laughs> behind the scenes, unintended. Um, let's just have a look. Mental, how do you keep your mental well-being, right? How do you tackle mental health problems? Or how do you handle... Whoops. Mental health problems. Or the last one, I'm just doing a copy and paste. Just to help you with this, um, cope with, because I think these are all really, really useful, right? To tackle, to handle, or cope with. How do you tackle men mental health problems? And this is great language because you can use this with any problem, right? How do you tackle the problem of climate change? How do we handle climate change? How do we cope with mental health problems? Um, later, I'm going to ask you this question. I mean, this is the question the website looks at, right? How do you keep your mental well-being? Mental well-being is a really good collocation, yeah? We can talk about mental health or mental well-being. Some very, very good collocations, both of them actually should have a hyphen. Thanks. Who am I thanking? I don't know. Right. So let me switch to this website. I'm just going to show you very briefly and, and discuss with you some of the ideas. <laughs> that was the bit about how do you feel? Uh, great. OK. Should I make that a bit bigger? There you go. Five steps to mental well-being. Um, evidence suggests, and this is the great thing about the National Health Service, right, is that they do research. So it's science backed. There are five steps to improve your mental health. Information about coronavirus, of course. Um, first of all, connect with other people. Interesting, right? Good relationships are important for your mental well-being. Yes. Um, this is great language, actually. A sense of belonging a sense of self-worth, right? Share positive experiences, emotional support. Look at the language. This is great language. Hopefully, I've got the moderators who are the e-moderators who are helping me moderate the stream. They should be sharing these links with you. Don't worry if not, you can get the links from the PDF at the end of the class. So you can have a look. Interesting what it says about don't, right? Do not rely on technology or social media alone to build relationships. That's so true, right? Number two, be physically active, right? And it talks about it's great for your physical health and fitness. Again, the NHS, great language, right? We should use the NHS as our teaching materials. <laughs> Improve your mental well-being, Really good language. Self-esteem. That's how you feel about yourself, right? Self-confidence. Um, great. Change your mood. Mood is a great word. Change your mood. Is, is your, you know, if you're in a good mood or a bad mood, it's your feeling, if you like. If you like. And what it says about don't. Do not feel you have to spend hours in a gym. That's good. Do activities you enjoy. Yeah, great. Number three, learn new skills, right? That can boost self-confidence. That's a great collocation. Boost self-confidence and raise self-esteem. Wow, that's just great. Sense of purpose, right? If you learn a skill, you could learn a language. You could learn how to knit. 
You could learn how to paint anything. You could try to cook something new. That's simple. Well, not that simple. <laughs> it doesn't always go well. Yeah, do not feel you need to learn a qualification. Yeah, you don't need to do exams. Just make it for fun. Number four, give to others. Great. Sense of reward. Positive feelings. Again, self-worth. All of these collocations. Make a note of them. They're really good, right? And number five, pay attention to the present moment. Was it Joanna who says, I'm happy because I am? <laughs> Very true. We call this nowadays mindfulness. That's the buzzword, right? The really popular word. Um, because I think in the past it was more about meditation, spirituality, and that those have so many connotations about God and religion that nowadays people talk about mindfulness because there's no religious connotation, at least in England and I think in America too. Paying more attention to the present moment can improve your mental well-being. Listen, if you can do nothing else but that one thing, that will change your whole life. <laughs> so true. Right. Excellent. Very, very interesting. Um, oh, emotions and health, mental health. Um, talking about mindfulness, there's an app that I used to use. It has some free stuff, but then you have to pay after a while. Um, but it's called Headspace. And I did use that for about six months and it was great. It's a great app. Um, I don't, they don't sponsor, but I just thought I'd let you know. Headspace, Headspace, one word, lovely mobile app to do a bit of mindfulness, right? If you're into that. Okay, great. So let me come back to you guys then. Um, Here's my question to you. This one here. Um, how do you keep your mental well-being? What do you do to keep your mental well-being? Take a moment and then let me know. Let's see what you're saying. Krishna, headspace, that's it. Nice mega, like that mega Thomas, good comment. Okay, let me show what mega says. He says, well, I always see to it that I always keep my self-worth from faltering. Nice, good. So my self-worth, lovely collocation from faltering is from falling apart or losing it. Really nice. I wonder how you do it, though, Mega. How do you do it? Uh, yes, doing yoga. Great. Arti, I do gardening. Brilliant. Faira says, to cope with, great, to cope with mental health problems, I tend to always think positively. Yeah, very nice. Great, lovely. Someone talked about this one, a growth mindset. I thought that's interesting. I have a growth mindset. There are two things, right? There's the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. And the growth mindset says, I can get better. Yeah. Many students say to me, oh, my English is so bad and I feel down in the dumps. But the growth mindset says, my English level is low now but i'm getting better i can actively get better and grow your english level is the same in both cases but your attitude is totally different the first one is down in the dumps and sad the second one is excited to grow growth mindset so important great Similar, I guess, Patel talks about positive thinking. Lovely, Patel. Nice. Um, what else do we have? I will do meditation. I love that. I love the fact, Kiddist, that you use will for habit, right? Will is not only the future, but for a habit we do again and again. 
I will get up at six o'clock. Actually, no, I will get up at seven o'clock, right? I will do meditation. Great, good. Uh, Diva, Divya says, by trying to keep myself busy. Great, nice. What else do we have? Um, Wajahat says, I hit the gym every day. Nice expression. Hit the gym, go to the gym. Uh, Singh says, by indulging in activities, which gives your mind a sense of calmness. Yes. You mean gives your mind, gives my mind a sense of calmness, right? Eating healthy food. Oh, all about motivation, vision, passion. Yes, great. Tan says, eat healthy food. That's interesting. I wonder if that helps, maybe. Siddhartha watching your videos. Really? Maybe. Great. JK, entertainment. Okay, by having some entertainment. Uh, Justa says, I do yoga and meditations. Oh, you mean yoga? <laughs> yes, great. Slight. That's probably a typo. I'm sure that was a typo, Justa. Yes. Right, Dr. Shriya says, for me, daily exercises and meditation help me fit as a fiddle. That's nice, right? At the same time, it's really helpful for my mental well-being. Lovely. And uplift my mood. Very, very nice, right? Um, I'm just going to add, because the expression, right, fit as a fiddle, I would say it keeps helps me keep fit as a fiddle, right? Um, I'm just going to add a couple of letters to tidy up, doctor. Yep. So it helps me keep fit as a fiddle. Fit, keep fit as a fiddle. The expression. Very nice. That means very, very fit, right? Excellent. Resting, sleeping and meditating from Maimuna. Sleeping, right? It's underrated. Sleeping is so important, really, for our mental health. We don't sleep enough. Really, really true. Great. Lots of ideas about mental health. I'm going to move on, right, from mental health to look at something else. But before I do, Badab Shibi Dooby 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 Bum Bum Bum. Oh, great. Give me a moment. Okay. What's next? Keith, let me ask you what's next, guys? Do you remember what's next? <laughs> after emotions and health. What was after emotions and health? I'll have to go back to my little thingy magic listening task listening task we've got a little video right uh, we're going to watch somebody and we're going to listen to them talk about not mental health talk about <laughs> feelings okay um, let me share this with you so we're going to listen to Stan talking about feelings and how men and women express feelings in different ways what I want you to do, my lovely IELTS speakers, not students, IELTS speakers, English speakers, growth mindset, try to spot, right, to see. Stop, stop. Oh, for goodness sake. Sorry, I'm getting these notifications. Um, try to... Try to spot uh, or to see as many words or phrases as possible related to feelings, right? So if you hear the word happy, write down happy. If you hear the word perplexed, write down perplexed, right? So any words connected to feelings Write them down in the comments and we'll discuss them later, right? So that's your task. Try to spot as many words or phrases as possible related to feelings. OK, good. Let me find the uh, video first and then we're going to watch. Are you ready? Yes, Keith, we're ready. <laughs> 
Okay, here we go. Stan talking about feelings. Yo, check it out. It's Stan the man. So, feelings and emotion. Interesting topic, yeah? Listen, my girlfriend Julie, yeah, she's very good at expressing her feelings. Sometimes you can read her like a book. When she's happy, she tells you, right? How are you, love? Oh, I'm over the moon. I'm ever so pleased I passed my exam. Right? And when she's down in the dumps, you can tell, right? Are you okay, dear? No, I'm not. I'm depressed, right? I don't want any dinner. I'm not in the mood. Leave me alone. That's Julie, right? And when she's angry, why, well, you know about it, right? I'm so cross with Colin at work. I did a great job preparing our presentation and he stole my thunder. He telling the bosses it was mostly his work. Oh, the idiot. <laughs> I tell you what, my Julie is an expressive person, right? <laughs> but when she asks me, you know, how are you doing? Yeah, all right. <laughs> are you feeling okay? Yeah, all right. You know, some men, like yours truly, are just not very expressive, right? Some men, I reckon, like yours truly, it's not that we don't know how to express our feelings. It's just that we don't always know how we actually feel. We don't spend a lot of time thinking about feelings and analysing them, right? We, we, we just are. <laughs> what was that geezer, right? That bloke who said, I think, therefore I am. Well, I reckon if he were a woman, sorry, if he had been a woman, <laughs> correct grammar, then he, she, would have said, I feel, therefore I am. And I reckon men today, it's more like, I am, therefore I am. <laughs> anyway, Great topic, feelings and expressions. Nice. Right, interesting. Stan. Stan the man. Um, great, good. So lots of ideas you've got there. Lots of words. Let's just share some of the words you came up with. Um, if I can find it. It's going to go back a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> Where are we? This is the trouble. There are too many comments. There are too many of you. <laughs> Where are we? Yes, we're ready. Stan. Ha okay, we got, I'll just randomly choose some of the words you've got. Happy. Great, that came up. Read her like a book, right? Which is to see somebody's feelings on their face. If you say, I can read her like a book, it means it's easy from their face to know their feelings or their what they're thinking, right? Some people, they're like, Arr. you can see they're angry, right? You can read them like a book. Other people, when they're angry, you've no idea that they're angry, right? That's great. Well done. Read them like a book. What else did we get? Uh, over the moon. Yep. Yeah, talked about being over the moon. Very, very happy. Over the moon. Good. What else did we get? Pleased. Yeah, she was pleased about something. Nice. Down, I think, came up. Nishona as well. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Ah, Jethil gets it. Stunned. I think we had stunned. Down in the dumps. That was it. And Kita, I'm so pleased. Yes. What else did we do? We've got Melly said depressed. That's right. That was uh, Stan's wife saying she was depressed. <laughs> uh, what else did we have? Depressed. Anyone else? Angry was there. I'm not sure if she said angry. She used a different word, I think. Maybe she said angry as well. But there was another word. Did anybody get it? Depressed, angry. Ah... Uh... I'm just scrolling through. Okay. It's making me dizzy. Ah, 
so cross yes joy well done cross meaning angry she also talks about being cross i'm not in the mood means i don't want to do it right i don't feel like doing it that was great thunder yes but what was the expression patel thunder but what was the expression did anybody get that expression hattie says angry cross thunder idiot the thunder expression Yay, Soleil gets it. Stole my thunder. And Marivik also, you've got it, right? Stole my thunder. If somebody steals your thunder, then it means that when you should get credit for something, they take the credit, right? I'll explain this in a moment when we look at the text. But yeah, he stole my thunder. He stole my good thing, right? I, I should get the credit but he stole it. Great. Expressive. <laughs> My missus is very expressive. Good. Malika talks about expressive. Great. She's an expressive woman. Absolutely. This was interesting, Patita. Ever so pleased. This is such nice, beautiful English, right? Instead of saying very pleased, say ever so pleased. I was ever so happy. I was ever so sad. That's just so natural and really nice English. Instead of very, yeah, I'm very happy. I was ever so happy. Well spotted, Patima. Great. Anything else we got? Uh, about ba -ba 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 -ba, uh, anything else? I'm just going to scroll through. Expressive, thunder, thunder, depressed. <laughs> got lots of okay uh yeah people have started to summarize that's great yep yeah, yam as well good all of those are good i'm just seeing if there's anything new upset maybe keep on surviving sounds like a song maybe upset yes okay i think those were the main things yes i'll just see if there's any any others okay those are the main ones we've got at the moment. So you've picked out a lot of the words related to feelings. The answer, for the answer, I'm going to ask you to watch again. But this time you'll see the words on the screen and you can check your answers. OK, let's do it. Here we go in a moment. So it's the same video, but you'll be able to read and see the words in bold um, about feelings. Ba -da -ba -da -bum -bum. Come on, Apple. <laughs> Yo, check it out. It's Stan the man. So feelings and emotion interesting topic yeah listen my girlfriend julie yeah she's very good at expressing her feelings sometimes you can read her like a book when she's happy she tells you right how are you love oh i'm over the moon i'm ever so pleased i passed my exam right and when she's down in the dumps you can tell right are you okay dear no, I'm not. I'm depressed, right? I don't want any dinner. I'm not in the mood. Leave me alone. That's Julie, right? And when she's angry, why, well, you know about it, right? I'm so cross with Colin at work. I did a great job preparing our presentation and he stole my thunder. He telling the bosses it was mostly his work. Oh, the idiot. <laughs> I tell you what. My Julie is an expressive person, right? <laughs> but when she asks me, you know, how are you doing? Yeah, all right. <laughs> are you feeling okay? Yeah, all right. You know, some men, like yours truly, are just not very expressive, right? Some men, I reckon, like yours truly, it's not that we don't know how to express our feelings. It's just that we don't always know how we actually feel. We don't spend a lot of time 
thinking about feelings and analysing them, right? We, we, we just are. <laughs> what was that geezer, right? That bloke who said, I think, therefore I am. Well, I reckon if he were a woman, sorry, if he had been a woman, <laughs> correct grammar, then he, she, would have said, I feel, therefore I am. And I reckon men today, it's more like, I am, therefore I am. <laughs> anyway, great topic, feelings and expressions. Nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Stan the man. I'm going to talk about his opinion in a moment, right? But just let me point out, you did very well. I think you got all of the feeling words. Very, very nice. Well done. A couple of things I thought were interesting there. Um, he, he did say angry and cross. Stole my thunder is a great expression, right? Just look at the context, right? So Julie did a great job preparing the presentation with Colin. But probably Colin told the bosses, hey, I did all the work. So Colin gets the credit. Colin gets the praise. And he almost stole that praise from Julie. And Julie gets nothing, right? She doesn't get any praise. So if somebody does that to you, they steal your thunder. Okay, great. Expressive is a nice, again, we talked about um, word families, right? Express, expression, expressive, expressively, right? Um, I think some other interesting words, reckon, right? You can use this in IELTS speaking, absolutely. Reckon means I think, I reckon. It's natural English, express our feelings. I should have highlighted that one as well. The other interesting one um, was this one, geezer. <laughs> okay, bloke, uh, don't use these in IELTS speaking because these are slang. These are British words meaning man, right? That man, that person or that man, it's always a man, that geezer or that bloke. It's very, very slang. So really interesting to know, but I would not use slang in IELTS speaking, right? I think therefore I am. <laughs> um, and for women, I feel therefore I am. Or for Stan, I am. Therefore I am, right? Interesting. So interesting language. And I wonder what you guys think. Do you agree that men express themselves differently uh, to women? I wonder. I wonder if you agree. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But listen, we're going to come back. We're going to skip on in a moment. Um, skip on if you like to skip. We have looked at a lot of phrases, right? Um, but let me move on because after phrases, what I would like to look at next is the listening, not the listening task. What's after the listening task is idioms. We've actually done some through the listening, like feel down in the dumps, right? Which means to feel low, sad or depressed. Um, but let's have a look at others. Come back. So let's share a few idioms. Let's add a few more to our list. The ones I've got at the moment are to have mood swings. Now, to have mood swings, or let's begin with to be in the mood. To be in the mood. We saw that, right? To be in the mood equals to feel like doing something. So I'm in the mood for dancing. It's a song. To be in the mood to do something. To do or to for, for doing, you can say. To be in the mood to do something. I'm in the mood to go to the cinema. Um, I'm in the mood to study English, right? To feel like doing something. To have mood swings is basically that, that your mood swings from happy to sad, happy to sad, and your mood is changing a lot. 
and often the connotation as a negative thing, right? Mood swings are generally seen as a negative thing, often connected with mental health problems or mental well-being, but maybe stress at work, things like that, you may have mood swings. We've got to be in low spirits. So we talked about to be low, to be down, to be sad. To be in low spirits is just to be sad, of course. But to spirits is the word there, to be in low spirits. We've talked about feeling down in the dumps to feel sad as well. Oh, let me up, move that up. Great. Let's see, guys, any other idioms you've got? <laughs> Melanie says, men are greater gossipers than women. Seriously? Come on, Melanie. Seriously? Men gossip more than women? Well, you'll have to convince me because I'm not convinced. <laughs> feeling under the weather. Ina, that's a nice one. Yep, I'm feeling under the weather. Under the weather. Now that one, yeah, I'm feeling a bit under the weather, is normally, is not just, it's not just a feeling of sad or happy. Under the weather is normally a bit sick, a bit ill. It's often much more physical, right, rather than emotional. Feeling sick, feeling off colour, right, these tend to be more whoops about um physical feeling rather than emotions but let's put it in here because it's still still useful oh irina an emotional roller coaster yeah to be on an emotional roller coaster to be experiencing uh, experiencing lots of emotions, of different emotions. Again, this is a negative thing. Thank goodness for spell checker. <laughs> Saves me time to be on an emotional roller coaster. Oh, Irina, I have to move you so we can see that. To be on an emotional roller coaster. So, yes, for example, when you're starting a new job, there's lots of emotions going on. Stress, happiness, sadness, confusion. That's an emotional roller coaster. Hello, Nicholas from Greece. To be in low spirits, we've said. Um, Azra, you're late. Azra, you're not late. You're extremely late. <laughs> We're about to finish soon. Oh, dear. Dorsa to be on a high, that's nice. Thank you, Dorsa. Yep, yeah. that means to be very happy. And it's idiomatic. Um, of course, it literally means that you're taking drugs to make you happy. But we use it idiomatically. You don't take drugs. You just say, I'm on a high. At my birthday party, all my family were there. I was so happy. I was ever so happy. I was on a high. This is a lovely expression, to be out of sorts, yeah? To be out of sorts. Um, to not feel yourself is another one. I, I don't feel myself. I don't feel myself today. I don't feel myself means I, I don't feel comfortable or happy, right? And often you just, you don't know why, but let me change that. I feel out of sorts. I, I don't feel myself. I don't feel comfortable or happy. Oh, oh come on. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. It's frozen. It's frozen. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Great to feel out of sorts. Oh, there's so many. Oh my gosh, so many material well-being. Chuffed to bits. Yeah, chuffed. Again, chuffed to bits is lovely. It's a British expression. I wouldn't use it in the um, the exam because it's 
British, it's local. Um, but really good expression, Helen. Yeah, chuffed to bits. Chuffed, happy, right? It's nice. Uh, I'm feeling blue. Yep, yeah, Tanja, we've talked about feeling blue earlier on, I think. Reader like a book we've had. Yeah. Any others? Paula, during menstruation, women usually have mood swings. Good example. On the edge of the seat. Is that a feeling? I guess it is. To be excited. Yes. To be tickled pink. Okay. Yeah. All of these are good. Maybe we can add one or two. Um, let me add this one from Kate and I'll just do this as the last one I think I am tickled pink to be happy right I'm oops I think I have to move you Kate because we can't see I'm tickled pink to be happy I'm happy I'm very happy. I don't know why you're tickled pink, but yes, that's what we say to be tickled to be tickled pink. I'm tickled pink. I was very very happy. Good. All of these different idioms. Let's leave it for there because there's a lot. We don't want to have too many. What I might do is pick out some more from the chat later, and I can add them to the final sheet. Okay. So listen. Um, before our last activity, um, I'll just remind you that the notes that we're making here, and I mean these notes here, uh, at the end of the class, I put them into a PDF, change them a little bit, um, upload load them onto the website, and there's also a web page. So you can go to the website later and get the link to the page and download them. Um, for those of you who are new, let me just show you where that is. If you go here to the uh, this one here, let me make it a bit smaller. So it's the it's Keith Speaking Academy, right? This is where you need to go later. KeithSpeakingAcademy.com. Um, go at the top to the free live lessons. And I think if our e-moderators can share the link, this would be great. But the free live lessons here, and you can find, first of all, the live lesson, the latest live lesson. So last week we talked about the virtual world and you can download the PDF, which is the, no the notes. So you can study offline as well, or you can go to the class. Now to make this easier for the website, the last live lessons, all the previous ones, you can access here. Um, all you need to do to get the PDF, right, is just click on the lesson you're interested in. If you're interested in family, just click on the family and it takes you. You can actually read the lesson online, but also this is where you can download the notes, right? So go to the page and then you can download the notes or you can just study here, right? You can study the different parts of the lesson directly on the website is another option, whichever is easiest for you. OK, so that's just to let you know about the website and that the, the PDF will be there. If I know some of the PDFs are missing, I'm updating them and they will be up in the next week or two. Just give me a bit of time to do that. And I need about three hours or four hours after the class today to upload. Three hours, you're saying, why do you need three hours? Because I need to change the notes and check the notes and all of that stuff. Anyway, let's move on to our last activity. What's coming up next? What's our last activity? Does anybody remember? We've talked about idioms. Our last activity, our last activity is the review. It's Kahoot time. Now, some of you don't like Kahoot, I know. Understandable, that's fine. Um, those of you who do like Kahoot, do stay with me. We're going to play this game. It's quite fun. It's a multiple choice. I'm going to ask you four questions. Each one, you choose A, B, C and D and check if you have been listening to today's class. We're going to pick out some key vocabulary or idioms 
and test you because testing is a great way to review but also to stick to get words stuck in your head my friend <laughs> okay let's get straight in there then kahoot again if you're new you'll need probably two screens or to switch because as well as watching me you will need to go to this place to kahoot.it right www.kahoot.it and if you go over there then you'll find the entrance to the quiz if you like we're going to play it together we'll do it live together um i'm going to give you a well you choose a name a nickname and then i'll give you a pin so let me give you the pin first okay let's okay so the pin for this game is nine three five eight two one six and uh, moderators, if you could just put the pin in the chat, that would be a big help for people because people are switching from one screen to another. So the pin is 9358216. You can put in your name um, and then the, we get ready to go. I'll just give you a few seconds to get into the room. Nice. Big thank you to the moderators on YouTube. We've got Paula and Jahan who are moderating and helping me with that. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, we've got 186 people. Just give you a second. If you can't get in, don't worry. Um, if you can't get in, you can just put your answer in the comments below. No, Shakun, no funny names today. People are allowed to use their own name. That was my mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't usually allow that, but never mind. Not a problem. Okay, just give you a second to find your space there. Bear with me. And the music's gone. Right, let's get started. Okay, let's get in there. Okay, and just before we start as well, I've also got moderators on the Facebook page. So, uh, Upsara, thank you very much for helping there. And uh, Al Saba bin Hack, thank you also for helping us with that. This is great, guys. Let's kick off. Feelings. Question one. Which is the odd one out? Which one is different, right? Which word has a different meaning? You've got 30 seconds. Hmm. Delighted, ecstatic, irate, or content? Have you been paying attention? <laughs> Well done. Well, 85 people got irate because irate means angry. The others really mean happy. Delighted, ecstatic, content are all happy, right? But irate um, is angry or very angry. A lot of mixed answers there. That's interesting. Let's move on. Oh, the leaderboard. Kinjal was the fastest one in there. Well done. Question number two. I'm not happy. I'm feeling down in the blank today. 
I'm not happy. I'm feeling down in the blank today. Come on, guys. Helen, well done. Mitra, well done. Juliana as well. Mohammed, be careful. Nemo, be careful. Well, most of you got it right. It's dumps with a U, not damp with an A. Damp with an A means wet, but dumps, right, is the rubbish tip. Down in the dumps. Well done, 142 of you. Impressive. Nice. Next question. Oh, Kinjal is still up there, but Nadar is coming in close. <laughs> right, number three. I hate this film. It's the most blank film I have ever seen. I hate this film. It's the most blank film I have ever seen. Loathing, loathe, loathness, or loathsome? What's the right answer? Oh, this is a, ch a tough one. Oh dear. Well done, Helen. Yeah, this was tough, right? This was very difficult. And I know people struggled with this earlier. Loathsome is the right answer here, right? Um, that's the only one that's the noun. Loathsome, a loathsome film. It sounds strange. It's an unusual uh, suffix for a noun, but it's the right answer. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Oh, creative manager has stolen your thunder, <laughs> King Jat. Creative manager has come in there, third place. Let's go to the last question. During COVID, our mental blank has suffered. Sorry, there's a typo, not out, our. During COVID, our mental blank has suffered. Three seconds left. Well done, Kashish. Nima, well done, Malai, well done. Whoa, that's impressive. That's great. 163 of you got well being, mental well being. Remember that website from the NHS, full of great collocations. Excellent. Well done. Let's move on and see the final result. <laughs> Third. Nada. Mickey me, Mickey key. Creative manager, he took or she took first place. Oh. I see Kinjal came in fifth place. Well done, excellent, nice. Creative manager, a great name. Lovely, that's it, brilliant. Guys, well done, thank you. Really, so much for joining me today. I do apologise. I've gone on a little bit longer than expected. But today we've looked at lots of language about feelings and emotion. Um, we've looked at lots of synonyms and collocations. We've talked a little bit about um, mental well-being, mental health and ways of tackling mental well-being. We've done a bit of a listening activity, picking out interesting idioms and expressions you can use. You've come up with lots of great ideas and great language. I am so impressed. I've got a feeling so many of you are changing from becoming IELTS students to becoming IELTS speakers, right? We could even say not only are you changing from English students to becoming an English speaker, Whatever your level, you can make that change from just being a student to a speaker. And that confidence is really going to help you. So well done, all of you. I'm very proud and very happy, ecstatic, elated, over the moon, on top of the world <laughs> to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Um, do remember, go later. You can check out on the website and um, the Key Speaking Academy. Um, if you're on YouTube, 
subscribe please do and turn on the notifications you can find out about my video coming up on saturday i'll be releasing a new video on saturday i think it's going to be very very interesting for you it's going to have lots of stuff um questions and answers great language so look out for that on saturday what else can i tell you come and join us at facebook facebook page key speaking academy you can find lots of information and come and join the group if you're interested in facebook groups in joining a motivated uh, and excited team excited then do come and join us right um, and a final word to remind you if you're interested in studying with me i've got the fluency course that you can join or the ielts speaking success course that is much more focused on preparing for you the test language tips questions and answers the full monty as we say in britain <laughs> thank you so much my friends take care these are difficult times with um coronavirus so look after yourselves stay safe and do take care of your mental well-being been a pleasure thank you everybody take care bye-bye